Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today I've got another World of Tanks review lined up for you guys. We'll be taking a very close look at this tier 9 behemoth, the M103, leading up to the famous T125, can't wait to get my hands on this tank. And the entire American heavy tank line has been a complete blast to play and the M103 definitely is not a disappointment. So today I'll be giving you a complete rundown of this tank's stats. I'll give you my advice on how to proceed with researching this tank's modules in the best way and also give you tips on what crew skills and equipment and ammo loadout to use, tell you what the most effective tactics are on this vehicle and also demonstrate them on some awesome gameplay. So stick around and we'll jump right in with a look at the module tech tree. So you start off with the stock 105mm gun that you get on the T32. Unfortunately the penetration is not very nice so you want to upgrade to the 120mm as quickly as possible. With the guns here, between the top gun and the second best gun, the difference is actually not too great. You've got noticeably better penetration but 242mm of pen is actually alright on the tier 9 120mm already. So the alpha damage is the same, the rate of fire is slightly increased on the upgraded gun but actually the rate of fire is already very decent on the tier 9 gun and then you get better gun handling but still the tier 9 gun is very competitive actually on this tank so really because this tier 10 gun costs 60,000 experience to research and you get it for free anyway once you unlock the T125 it's kind of up to you whether you really want to go for this top 120 millimeter or whether you just want to stick with the tier 9 gun. It kind of comes down to whether you really enjoy playing the M103 and want to get the most out of your experience while playing it or whether you just want to rush through and get your hands onto that T125 tank at tier 10 as quickly as possible. Anyway, however, you definitely want to get the upgraded turret because this gives you better survivability and will also boost your gun stats even if you're using the tier 9 gun significantly. Then, as you can see, I did not research the tracks and that is because you do not actually need the suspension upgrade to be able to fit all modules. However, in retrospect, I kind of regret not getting these because they do give you a decent upgrade in ground resistances. So actually, I would recommend getting these tracks even before upgrading the engine because the terrain resistance will improve your mobility almost as much as the engine upgrade so definitely get these tracks after that research the engine and then last of all the radio and then go ahead and unlock the t110 e5 Next, I'll give you an overview of the M103 stats and we'll be comparing them to the Conquerors because the Conqueror, the tier 9 British heavy tank, is probably the most similar vehicle in the game to the M103. So when we look at the DPM, we can see that the DPM of both of these tanks are fairly respectable, but the Conqueror gets the slight edge. And the same thing goes for penetration, but actually the difference is negligible and 258 millimeters is outstanding at tier nine. You'll basically be able to slice through the frontal armor of most tier 10 tanks with this. The average damage at 400 might seem like quite a lot, but actually at tier nine, compared to other tier 9 heavy tanks like say the E75, the T10, the ST1 or the WZ111, 400 hit points of damage is kind of a bit disappointing but it's made up for by this very nice rate of fire of 5.59 but again the Conqueror has got it slightly beaten. The caliber at 120 is actually also very nice because it means that you can overmatch armor that is uh, up to 30 millimeters thick. The shell velocity, however, is very, very impressive for AP ammunition, 1067. That's kind of more in the APCR ballpark as far as shell velocity goes. So that is very good for long range shots. And the ammo capacity at 33 is all right, it seems at first, but when you look at the very quick rate of fire, you kind of have to pace yourself with your shots, especially when it comes to deciding what ammo loadouts you use, this can be quite noticeable. The aim time at 2.21 seconds is excellent for a heavy tank, but then again we have a Conqueror that leaves the M103 trailing far behind in this regard with only 1.8 seconds, that's amazing. And the same story can be told for the accuracy and the dispersion values. But then again, all these values are already very good on the M103, but the Conqueror's just got that slight edge. The 
Elevation angles, however, are favorable for the M103. 8 degrees of gun depression is very nice for a tier 9 heavy tank. And actually, as we'll see when we look at the armor profile, that will allow you to put your turret to some very good use. The speed at 34 kilometers an hour is all right, I guess, for a tier 9 heavy tank, but it's not that impressive, but the power to weight ratio at 15.25 is pretty nice. And the terrain resistances are decent as well, especially with the upgraded tracks. So that means that uh, this tank is actually fairly mobile. It doesn't have medium tank mobility like, say, the T10 might even have, but it's pretty maneuverable for a tier 9 heavy tank. The armor is actually better than the Conqueror, and this is the main advantage that the M103 has over the Conqueror, but we'll be taking a closer look at that in just a second. The view range at 390 is bang on average for tier 9, but then again the Conqueror's got 400 meters. So overall we can conclude that really the M103, although the stats by themselves are very impressive, look, it looks like the Conqueror has got its American counterpart beaten in almost every regard, except for survivability. So talking of survivability, let's have a look at the armor profile of the M103. The M103 has got a very, very complex armor composition, especially from the front. So we can see that the hull is actually similar, if not identical, to the T110E5's hull with this nose that it has. And this, just this kind of strip of armor right here is very, very thick. And the entire upper hull is basically impenetrable because it's angled very, very well. And that's why you should never, ever, even if you can fire down onto the upper hull, you should never take that shot. However, the lower glacius is a very different story. And it is a weak spot that can be penetrated by most tier 7 tanks even, especially, and that is a very big tip when you're engaging this tank, if the M103 is angling its armor like this, say, then you want to put a shot in here because the... M103's frontal armor is kind of curved, so that means that the angle is actually decreased when you put a shot in right into this corner or into this corner. When driving the M103, that means that it actually sometimes can be a bad idea to angle your armor, especially when enemies are aiming at your lower glacis. If you are hold down, however, you can go ahead and angle as much as you like. But when you're angling, you always have to keep in account that your side armor is actually very, very thin and can sometimes even be overmatched. Or at least you have to keep the angle very steep because otherwise enemies will be able to penetrate and most of the time angling is not advisable because first of all, your side will be penetrated and secondly, it makes penetrating your lower glacius at these corners here more easy. The turret is, as we're used to on American tanks, pretty sturdy, but it's not as good uh, as the T-32's turret. The reason for that is because the armor profile is very, very complex here. Now around the gun mantlet and anything in the frontal part of the turret is actually very, very strong, but when we go up just above the gun mantle here, this green zone that you can see can basically be overmatched by any gun engaging this tank, so if you fire down or just even if you're in front of the M103 and get shots up here or at the cupola, that will almost always be a definite penetration. When you're driving the M103, that means that you have to try to constantly wiggle your turret to make it more difficult for the enemies to hit that cupola. But you shouldn't wiggle it too far because the side armor of the turret, when at an angle, becomes pretty easily penetrable as well. So just jiggle the turret slightly about like this and your good turret traverse will allow you to do that pretty effectively. So we can conclude when we look at the armor of M103 that it in general is not bad and it definitely is a lot better than the Conqueror's armor and that gives, that's just the major advantage that the M103 has over its British counterpart but you cannot always rely on it especially when you're engaging fast aiming enemy vehicles like say a Leopard 1 or an E50. On the other hand if you're engaging enemies that are lower tier than you or just low profile enemies then it can be very advisable to face hug them because when you face hug an enemy they will be unable to hit the lower glacius but they will also be aiming up at you like this and they will not be able to hit your cupola or the weak spot on top of your turret. 
Another thing that's probably worth mentioning is that the M103 is a very juicy target for artillery because in the typical American style it has got very good frontal armor but very bad side and rear armor and that means that uh, you really have to take hard cover for artillery shells and also you have to keep moving to avoid them when you are in the open. This also means that you should never get yourself isolated against lots of enemy opponents because as soon as you get outflanked you're dead because your side and rear armor just is not up for the job. Next I'll be showcasing the hit zones of the M103, so these are the places where you have to shoot to damage internal modules, crew member, set the tank on fire or even blow it up. And straight away we can see that frontally actually there aren't any modules that are really susceptible to damage. You can obviously penetrate the lower glacius as a weak spot and the cupola, but when you get the chance, try to hit and penetrate the cheeks of a turret because that is where the ammo rack is situated. However, frontally like this, you will have a very, very low chance to penetrate these areas. From the side, however, it's a different story and if you hit the frontal part of the turret or the part just below the gun on the hull, then uh, the ammo rack will get damaged. You can hit crew members when you hit just behind the zone where the ammo rack is located and the engine uh, can be hit in the lower part of the hull. From the rear again, the entire rear section of the hull between the tracks is susceptible to catching fire when hit and hitting the rear part of the turret will cause crew damage. And from the other side again, we've got the ammo rack in exactly the same spot with some more opportunities to hit and injure crew members. And that's something you have to keep in mind that actually the M103's ammo rack gets damaged quite often, so uh, be a bit careful when giving your side to enemies there. So now we'll be taking a look at ammo loadout, equipment and crew skills. So beginning with the loadout, I like to take 23 AP rounds, 7 heat rounds and 3 HE rounds. Now it is worthwhile to point out that the heat rounds on this tank are amazing with 340 millimeters of penetration that's enough to slice through the frontal turret armor of an E100, a mouse and stuff like that so the heat is very very nice and how much you want to take basically depends on how much you can afford because they are pretty expensive at 4400 credits or 11 gold a shot and I like to take 7 but then again it's completely up to you. The HE is also pretty useful against very lightly armoured tanks like for example the German lightly armoured tank destroyers but the good thing is that you don't really need to use a lot of premium shells in this vehicle because the standard AP rounds are very very sufficient actually most of the time due to their extremely nice penetration and obviously this is the gun you are also using on the T110 E5. So, with regards to crew skills, I would recommend getting repairs and brothers in arms on your entire crew. Probably, I'd on this tank, get repairs even before brothers in arms. The reason being, because of your bad side armor, you cannot really afford to get tracked out in the open where enemy artillery and flanking medium tanks will be able to take you down very, very quickly. Then, you... Out of the same reason, you probably want to get six cents, and that's just an awesome skill to have. Brothers in Arms, again, is very, very good. Safe storage is a must-have on this tank because your ammo rack, as we already found out, is situated here and here and can be destroyed very, very easily. Then, also, smooth ride and snapshot on gunner and driver are very useful to have because you want to be able to pop around that corner, take a quick shot and retreat before enemies have the time to zero in on your weak spots. So having that reduced aim time and that better snapshot capability will be very useful. And also jack of all trades is actually pretty nice. So for your complex equipment, you definitely want to have a vertical stabilizer and vents. Vertical stabilizer again to improve your ability to take snapshots, vents because it's a heavy tank and vents are awesome and of the same reason as vents you want to take the tank on rammer because it also is awesome and will boost your damage per minute. So next let's skip to the battlefield and have a look how this tank performs out there dealing with some of the most impressive opponents that it can face in this game the e75 and so on and so forth you know what i'm talking about so uh, i won't keep you waiting and i'll see you there in a second so for our first game we have spawned on steps which is an absolutely awesome map for the m103 i feel now you will notice that this is not the top gun on this vehicle this is the tier 9 120 millimeter so the 
second to last gun you can unlock on this tank and this replay is to showcase that actually this gun also is pretty viable. Now uh, please excuse me for the fact that there is no in-game sound in this replay as for the next one I'll be showing you and I don't know why but this is kind of a pretty old file actually and somehow apparently the sound doesn't work on World of Tanks 9.5. Don't ask me why, but it doesn't. So anyway, I'm in a platoon with my mate General Denny, he's in his Yak Tiger, I'm in my M103 and this couldn't be a better matchup I think. Uh, we've already taken out one of the top tier enemy heavies and now we're going to show this enemy Yak Panther that he has progressed a bit too far into our territory. And uh, this is a great position for the M103. I'm hold down here. He's basically got no chance to penetrate me. For him, he was firing up at me. He didn't have a chance to hit my cupola. So I was hiding my weak spot very effectively. And that's something that that's really the best position you can be in is if your enemies have to aim up at you in the M103, but they cannot hit your lower glacius because you still are hold down. And those kind of situations are pretty rare, but you kind of have to try to find them to uh, play this tank to its max effectiveness. On the move, I put a very nice shot through the Tiger One's turret right there. And now I prepare my second shot, and there we go. This is not even the top gun, but still the DPM is very, very nice on this vehicle. With uh, the great reload time, although the alpha damage at 400 is maybe not the best in tier, but it's still fairly decent, and... Uh, I ran with Ferdinand, sorry Ferdinand, <laughs> and um, now I'm going to speed up the replay a bit while uh, we try to find the Lorraine and you can see that the enemies have broken through on the other side of the map and this is something that will happen fairly often on steps is that uh, you get a kind of a trade of sides and it's kind of hard to say which side is superior but I actually think that the eastern side side I am on right here is better at least for a tank like the M103 as opposed to the western flank and the reason for that is just because of this ridge line right here and that's something that you don't have on the west and for a tank like the M103 that is just so good at completely dominating its enemies over a slight undulation of the ground just like this that is not too steep to uh make its 8 degrees of gun depression not useful but uh, it's steep enough to hide its weak lower glacius and it allows me to pick up a kill right there again and or actually I think I didn't pick up a kill did I the kill was on the tiger before excuse me anyway I'm now trying to hit this AMXM forward it is a kind of tricky shot and this is a kind of situation where you'd rather have the top gun because of its better gun handling better accuracy better aim time Still, I managed to take out that M4, fairly clutch shot there, but I hit it anyway. And again, I'm going to speed up the replay a bit here, because, uh, yeah, it's kind of a bit of, uh, you know, end game where it takes a while between finding enemies. And I hit my shot against the third one, but again, my chances would be higher here with the upgraded gun, and also the penetration would be nice to have. Probably with the best gun on the tank, I would have been able to pen that shot, but never forget that the penetration is still very, very nice on this tier 9 120mm. So, really, this tier 9 gun is very, very comparable to the gun the T-34 uses at tier 8, but with better gun handling. And for those of you who know the T-34, you guys will know that that gun is absolutely amazing as far as alpha damage and pen is concerned. And the gun handling is improved when you fit it on the M103. So I successfully blind shot that Ferdinand there and now I'm gonna focus on the Lorraine 40T. And it looks like we'll be able to pick up a top gun. Yes, we can. Very, very nice there. And now um, I think General Denny takes up the Tiger 2. And I think we secured a crucial contribution with that kill. But correct me if I'm wrong. We'll have a look at the post game stats and find out in a second. Anyway, Archie hits me there. And um, as I pointed out, this is the kind of situation where you don't want to be spotted right now in the open with the M103. Because an American Archie like the M12 can put some serious hurt down against you when uh, when you're out in the open like this and have got no cover basically so that's why I keep moving and I'm kind of trying to figure out where the Archie will be I realize that the Lova will be taken out by all my teammates down there so I guess I'm just gonna try to hunt down this artillery here and 
he takes a snapshot at me, misses, I take a snapshot and miss as well, so I guess uh, <laughs> we went even there. And I'm just going to progress, but probably the T32 is going to get there before I, uh, I close in. So I'm going to speed up again a bit, because this part is not all too eventful. And... There is the M12. Unfortunately, he's running away from me. That means that the IS3 picks up the kill. And um, that was a six-kill game in the M103. So actually, I was getting confused there. It was not a crucial contribution, but a Brothers in Arms medal. And I did pick that up, so I was very glad to get that, along with the Top Gun. And um, we can see that we got the most experience and I, almost the most damage. But my friend General Denny just got me beaten there by a slight margin. So, uh, yeah, I was a bit uh, bit <laughs> disappointed about that. But anyway, still a very, very nice round. And you can see that we were able to penetrate 13 out of 14 hits, even with the stock gun. And our hit to shots ratio was not too bad, really, especially considering that many of our shots later in the game were at pretty long range. Range. we only missed two of those and you can see that basically half our damage was dealt at very long range and fortunately our armor wasn't really tested in this game at all because we were playing against lower tier vehicles and we were able to hide our weak spots very successfully so probably they didn't even try to penetrate us so i hope this game could kind of showcase that even with the tier 9 gun on the tank, it is still a very, very effective machine and can definitely hurt its enemies a lot. So the tier 10 gun is not a necessity, but I will show you now that actually with a tier 10 gun, you can perform very nicely too. So for our second game, I have spawned on Overlord and I'm going for central part of the map here. This is now a tier 10 game, not quite as nice a matchup as the last one, but to balance things out, we are now using the T110 E5's 120 mm tier 10 gun with 158 millimeters of penetration, a very, very nice and uh, fearsome weapon indeed. So. I've located on the central hill here because it allows me to basically dominate the entire uh, map around the enemy base here, hopefully. And a lot of the time, tank destroyers now in this game, there aren't very many tank destroyers in the enemy team. But for example, a tank like the Yak Tiger would very often locate somewhere over here. So, or even back here. So that will allow me to maybe spot him, I was hoping. And another great thing about this location, I find, is although it is pretty aggressive... Um, it can allow you to, at some point, uh, when enemy heavy tanks going down here, like this type 4 heavier is, it can allow you to flank round and uh, create diversion or even uh, hit those enemy tanks in the back. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do right here. However, before that, the T-49 has to be taken out. We do that successfully and now this T-57 heavy is going ham and I decide to help him. And this is a kind of an ideal situation for the M103 when you have a higher tier or um, more, let's say, more healthy or more durable heavy tank that will take the damage for you. Now, uh, I guess the M103 is not exactly a very durable heavy tank, but he took the damage for me anyway. So um, when that happens, that puts the M103 in a position where he can provide supporting fire without having to risk... Uh, getting outflanked or getting focused down and penetrated by enemy vehicles. So now I will take this position here that allows tanks with good gun depression like the M103 to uh, take shots at enemy vehicles on the beach. And this T110 is just in a very, very um, ungrateful position right now. So I track him there, unfortunately, just a little too late on the reload and He's uh, basically just done for right now. I get another shot into him and then he's taken out by another M103. So uh, kind of showcasing this tank a little more right there. And the score is 65, so it's pretty even right now. I'm going to speed up the replay a bit again because it's going to take me a while to find a new engagement. So I hope that I had hoped that that object 430 would, or 140 actually, um, would progress out towards the, my tank destroyer so that I would get some shots into it but unfortunately that didn't happen so I take a snapshot at that Skoda T50 but it misses so I decide to advance up the slope to hopefully kind of loop around those enemy medium tanks right there and uh, hopefully get some damage into them. 
and sure enough we get the side of object 140 and put a very juicy shot for 417 hit points into his flank and again this showcases the very nice gun depression that the M103 gets and unfortunately the leopard is hiding behind a bunker so I don't get to shoot him and now these um, tanks here the object 140 and the E50 are kind of threatening to break through so I decide to help my T10 and AMX 1390 in taking them down obviously with the stealth interest in play that I might pick up a kill in the process of doing so so it seems like that AMX 1390 messed up pretty big time and I drive over the ridge hoping to penetrate the object 140 on the turret and this is something I just want to quickly point out is that the object 140's top turret armor is not at all comparable to that of the AM uh, of the T62A. So whenever you engage uh, an object 140 or an object for, uh, 430 even, you can try to hit this upper part of the turret and most of the time you will overmatch. So that was what I was hoping for, but obviously in my case it doesn't work. So I bounce my shot off him and now there's an FV215B engaging me from the rear as well. Luckily I get a clutch shot into the side of the object 140 was over angling there and take him out so now I have to engage this very very dangerous tier 10 British heavy tank. He over angles, I get a shot into his side and now I'm not quite sure what to do here. I'm pretty sure he cannot hit my lower glaciers right now so that is big advantage but his gun is accurate enough to get shots into my cupola every time and that's what happened right there so i have to be very very careful in this engagement and hopefully this m103 can get round quick enough to help me out the dpm of this british tier 10 heavy tank is fearsome right now i'm trying to face hug him and uh, it works kind of he bounces off me so i'm kind of in a bit of a panic right now honestly i try to hit his cupola but i don't know why would i bounce there maybe i should have loaded heat ammo right now but I was kind of in a bit of a, yeah, panic, I guess, and that was a really bad thing. If I had kept the cool head there, I could have just loaded heat. That would have been a good moment to load heat ammo there to face hug him and just put a shot clean through his turret. But unfortunately, I kind of messed it up and get taken out. But luckily, another M103 gets revenge for me. So shout out to you, Mr. Bap. Bapt Man XP, very interesting name there. So now the hunt is on for this enemy Yak Tiger. You stayed pretty safe for the entire game, really. But the T57 Heavy gets a couple of shots into him, and now the Leopard is probably going to take him out. So there we go, that's the end of this game, and. Um, as you can see, the M103 can also hold its own definitely in a tier 10 game, especially with that very, very effective 120mm gun that it borrows from the T110E5. So we managed to pick up a first class mastery badge in this game and 1223 base experience, just shy of 4000 damage and the only one who bested us in our team was another M103 so that just goes to show you how good this tank actually is and also that uh, with 1220 experience I was unable to get an ace tanker it also goes a long way to show you just how well people are doing in this vehicle actually because in many vehicles 1220 XP would easily get you an ace tanker for the detailed report you can see that our shots to hit ratio was better in this game than in the last one and uh, that is probably also due to the better gun characteristics of the upgraded gun but we bounced more shots and I guess that might be down to the fact that our opponents were a lot higher tier in this round than in the last engagement. Now you can see that the armor of the M103 while being a lot better than say the Conqueror's armor it's not as good as say an ST1's or an E75's armor so it's kind of in the middle there and you cannot really all the time rely on your armor to absorb enemy damage especially when engaging tier 10 opponents but if you get this tank hold down and can somehow try to prevent enemy shooting at your cupola for example by wiggling your turret or by having your enemy shoot up at you and also if you most of all avoid angling your armor too much because of your weak side armor then uh, the armor can definitely hold up on this vehicle especially when facing lower tier opponents so the m103 a tier 9 american heavy tank what do i make of it finally well 
in my opinion this vehicle is absolutely amazing and I had a blast of a time playing it, probably one of my favourite tanks to play so far. Although I must say the T-32, its predecessor was even more fun actually, but still the M103 is a great vehicle. So is it better than the Conqueror? Well, it kind of depends. I think the M103 in direct stats comparison to the Conqueror definitely looks pretty weak actually, but I think the M103 is a better rounded package and I believe that the Conqueror would have the edge over the M103 in a tier 10 game and facing lots of high tier opponents because of its special gun characteristics allowing it to say aim at weak spots more effectively and the armor of the M103 not holding up as well against uh, higher tier opponents. But I think in a very good matchup, then the M103 is probably better than the Conqueror even, because its armor can definitely shine in those kind of tier 9 games with only 2 or 3 tier 9 tanks, as you could see in the first replay, and that is where the M103 definitely excels. Which is not to say that it's bad in a tier 10 game either, because this gun definitely blasts holes through any tier 10 tank. And that's why I think that overall I probably still prefer the Conqueror, but I wouldn't just say that the M103 is outright terrible in comparison. The Conqueror probably has the slight edge overall, but I think that the M103 is definitely a very, very strong vehicle in its own right. Is it strong enough to keep it even when I've researched the T110E5? Well, probably not, and the reason for that is because on its own, I might even decide to stick with the M103, but in my opinion, the T110 E5 getting the same gun and all is just basically an upgraded version of the M103, and for me, there's no reason to play the M103 when I could just as well play the T110 E5, which is even better, I think. But still, the M103 is definitely not a pain to grind through. On the contrary, it was a lot of fun, and I can definitely recommend this tank to all of you guys who are looking for a kind of an all round jack of all trades kind of vehicle that will definitely get you through any tier 9 and 10 battle. So I hope this review and guide was informative and helpful for you guys. If it was, please make sure to like this video and also subscribe to my channel because it really helps me out. Thanks for watching as usual. I hope you all have a wonderful new year and I'll see you in 2017. Goodbye.